Write in the mail, MS sex games from Japan. Collecting without fail, those shoot 'em ups, and that's the plan. He doesn't just collect them, he also codes them too. Join us and we'll go on electric adventures with you. Hey YouTube, Electric Adventures here with a pick up and play video with a package all the way from Canada and Toby from Collectivision on the box uh, what is inside now I do know what's inside um, I guessed anyway um, just take the wrapping out a very special oh wow he's actually put some extras in there as well a very special thing that Collectivision have been working on for quite some time um, And I was very lucky that, uh, just being a member of Collectivision, Toby saved me one of these units. I was maybe thinking I was going to have to wait for the second batch. So I'm going to show you what it is so we know what we're talking about. And it is none other than a Collectivision Phoenix. That's number 427. So it's obviously in the shape or style of the original ColecoVision um, so inspired by it has a full-size cartridge port there where you can put Coleco cartridges you have two joystick ports on the front which will accept ColecoVision joysticks of course you can use Atari joystick with um, an adapter to get the um, get the keypad there's actually a keyboard port because this has an FPGA processor in it so you can actually use it for more than just being a ColecoVision. In the side it has a Super Nintendo um, controller port, um, an expansion port in the back, um, and we have 12 volt DC and HDMI out. Let's give you a closer look at the front. They've done a really good job with this case. It's really good quality, really good build quality. So rubber feet on the bottom. So very nice similar press and you've got power and reset so very much looking forward to playing with this and give it a try we will um, I'll figure out how not very good with HDMI sources but I will work it out even if I have to point a thing at the screen now as part of uh, a system uh, you get Sydney Hunters a physical cartridge of Sydney Hunter and the Caverns of Death and an SD card and a nice manual. Pretty good figure SD card. So I said it is an FPGA console. And as shipped, they already have um, Atari 2600 working as well as the ColecoVision. Um, although the Atari 2600 is in its early, still in its early stages, it works for a lot of games. They have a couple of quirks to um, to work out. So there's the. Uh, Sydney Hunter and Cabin's Death cartridge. It's very nice to get. Um, I have previously played a beta of that, but I haven't actually played the final game. So, a really nice addition to my um, collection of um, games. And then we have a micro SD uh, adapter with a Phoenix logo on it and a micro SD card in there. And we have. A very well done looking manual. All in the style of the original ColecoVision manuals. Showing you how you connect everything up. And it's got quite a few detailed instructions there because when you boot up, you can choose which core to load into the, um, you know, to run in the Phoenix. So it actually comes with a, um, a HDMI cord, fairly long one too. That's really nice. And I wasn't expecting this. Is actually a American Super Nintendo controller. Um, I do actually have a pair of these because I have an American Super Nintendo. Um, but it's really great because I do know that the wiring is a little different between the American Super Nintendo and the Japanese ones, famous cult ones, and the Australian ones, so it's good that I got one of those. Um, and cool colour anyway, too. 
So very nice extra addition there. And so this is maybe a power supply. Yep, it's a little power supply. It's a two pin one. So I don't have my glasses on. So it's a 110 to 240 volts, so it'll work in all regions, 50, 60 hertz, um, and outputs 12 volt, 500 milliamps, so I've just got to use a plug converter on that, and that'll work fine here. Nice and long, too. Um, very, very uh, nice, a lot of things. Um, so um, I'm very, very happy that Toby sent me that. Uh, I am a big favour back. Um, and the uh, Collector Vision guys are planning on doing another run. They're taking pre-orders for it now. It probably won't happen till February because they've got to get enough to get, um, you know, order a minimum quantity of the boards and the cases. Um, but they've proven that they can deliver the system and the system works really well. Now, the really good thing about this, the FPGA, so it emulates a stock standard ColecoVision. It also can emulate a ColecoVision with the Super Game module and it can also emulate a ColecoVision with the F18A processor um, which is an enhanced graphics chip processor that you could get for the ColecoVision which wasn't wasn't widespread because it's quite a hard thing to add to a Coleco you've got to do a fair bit of soldering and things like that um, and there are quite a few um, developers now that there are such a large quantity of Phoenixes out there um, who will be supporting more of um, those extra features of the ColecoVision in future releases of course um, uh, and the f 18 a is actually very easy to make um, your code detect some of that and you know you turn uh, features on and off. Same with the Super Game module. So hopefully when they release a game it's for a wider audience as possible to allow those games that have got extra colours, more sprites on the screen and things like that which I'm interested in playing with myself of course. Um, so um, I'll figure out how we're going to hook this up and give it a bit of a go. I'll see if I can get capture going um, through HDMI on this and um, I'll probably have to do it at my other workstation over there and um, set it up and let's have a play and give it a um, see what it's like. Okay so I decided to just plug it into uh, this Asus HDMI monitor, point the camera at the screen and we'll turn it on for the first time together. So lights come on on the unit There we go. Popped up very quickly. Oh, and yeah, I've got the Sydney Hunter game in there, so it's booted straight to that. The sound will be a little tinny because <coughs> the um, if this is just a you know computer monitor, so it doesn't have um, tremendous you know speakers. Probably should have looked up the button mappings as well, eh? Hey? So let me enjoy gold a little bit, looks pretty cool. Good old Cindy Lando. So the Super Nintendo cartridge works out of the box. I pressed A then. <clears throat> so, throw boomerang. Whoops. <laughs> so A, throw my boomerang, B, jumps. Oops, ow. It's a bit mean. Ooh. Not fine. Oh, 
Oh. <clears throat> this is completely different timing to mine. Slime. <clears throat> yeah, it does a very good job. All right, we won't play that too much. This is that's all here. We'll just um, we'll turn that off. Take the cartridge out. And we'll just turn it on without a cartridge. Okay, so it's booted <coughs> up um, the uh, Coleco Core, and we have a few ROMs on there. Armageddon, Chess Final, Light Good Racing, Mecha 8, Mr. Turtle, Princess Quest, Quest for the Golden Chalice, which is like adventure, Sacred Tribe, Spunky, uh, Resale Release, Tank Mission. Now this is one of the games that supports the F-18. Controller for this one. We'll reset. Um, I might be racing. I know how to play that one. So as you can see, load stuff off ROM. And I think then you've got something like Mecha 8. So this is a super game module game. <clears throat> so this is actually using the MSX sound chip as well. Try and get us hit as little as possible, and then pick up your energy to um, keep going. Basically, lost that power up. So, yeah, works really well. 
else can I try? Um, so I'll see that all these games come on them all. So, Zombie Near is another good win. I'm probably going to have to put in a Coleco controller to do some of the others. I'll just do this one here. This is a really good version of uh, Adventure. But for the Coleco. That's not the green key, you have to take that somewhere else. Uh -oh. It's the purple key with the dragon there. there so as you can see it's actually quite well done reset again <clears throat> so what I might do I'll um, just pause a second I'll go get a Coleco controller and I might put a couple more things on the SD card <clears throat> alright so I've chucked a few ROMs on there I've got a slightly one Coleco controller uh, let's go look at some of mine so let's see our current beta of Berserk It does sound like humanoid. You can run around, you can die, you can shoot. Oh, so down diagonal doesn't work. You can't die when you go on the robots yet, but you can run to the next screen. So, um, not too bad on the Berserk. Obviously, more to come later. Reset. Uh, Another one of the games in progress. Now this one does require currently the super game module. Game mode easy. Really managing sound working, it needs some more sound. This game's actually very close to being complete. Just little very close to being um <clears throat> done. Just Can't hold the fire button down and get bombed to. I've got to press the fire button to get them. Oops, that was a bit silly. As you can see, it's nice and colourful. Um, yes, the scrolling, the uh, scrolling is eight pixel, but it is probably as colourful as it can be. needs like the, the bombs need needs the falling sound we need we need the um, <clears throat> background uh, throbbing but all the animations as you can see are working collision detection doesn't look too bad I'm trying to at least get to the next stage here the next stage. Get some UFOs. Whoops, oh, I ran into a thing. Alright, so as you can see that's progressively all 
Uh, what is it all? Um, five stages um, are done. The end of level, um, end of end, end cavern isn't quite done. But as you can see, it works quite well. Yeah, not too bad. We're going on the same theme, combining this with a <coughs> an update. So this is a game that I was actually working on quite a while ago. I had actually forgotten that I was working on it, so it's a port of um, uh, Egerland for the MSX across to the Coleco, but it's not taking the existing MSX code. I've actually written it from scratch, so there's a bit of a test screen here to test the um, various character sets. Um, now this is basically testing the level logic. It has all 100 levels. Um, this here is the man. It's probably not the best place to put it on an actual thing, but you can see it's using lots and lots of colour. Uh, all the animations are looking good, <clears throat> and all of the puzzle elements are actually there. If we press to the right, this is my in my test mode, so we can go and have a look. And it actually has all of the level layouts. I do believe if I keep going, it will eventually. And I've just got the, the man here, just in a particular location, so he's over the top. Um, and I think it's looking, you see even the um, these cabbage things are peaking occasionally and stuff like that. So it actually does have, there it goes, <laughs> it does have most of the animation logic and, and everything like that. And I hope you agree, looks very good. So it's probably a game that I should actually finish off one day, eh? Uh, and, you know, it's a puzzle game. It uh, can get very hard some of these levels. You've got to work out what to do in the right order. Um, and um, lots of good fun. But I'll probably put some nice password codes in there so you can, <coughs> um, you know, jump to a particular level. But more complete than I remembered. Any more? Oh, and then of course there's my Pixidisc game, which will just run on a standard ColecoVision. Uh, doesn't need the super game module. It's not too bad. I'm not happy with the sound effects. So. There's a little bug. There we go. There's the little bug I haven't fixed yet. Sometimes when you bomb the things on the bottom. Um, the exploded one in the wrong spot. But power ups work. And I said it's got auto fire. I like the original mean version of the game on the M6 and Spectrator, which didn't. Oops, got me. It still is quite a mean version of the game, though. And you know, shadow underneath the ship and things like that as well. So next, I thought I'd try starting it up and um, selecting a core. Oop. So let's try. And you can see you can have more cores, so the, we could have an MSX core in the future, as an example. And you've got the keyboard port there, so there's no reason why the ColecoVision features couldn't emulate a um, um, <clears throat> couldn't emulate an MSX in the future. Sorry, I've never played with this before. Oh, here we go. Low ROM. I'm still using a Coleco joystick here, by the way. Now, I've put too many ROMs on here, I know. Doesn't seem to do pages. Oh, here we go. So once again, using click o joystick here, which is probably not a good idea. Alright, so power blank.
And there we go. As I go forward. Sounds good too. Put the sword. Kill the dragon. Once again, don't know what the hell I'm doing. And played adventure for ages. No. That's the bridge I think you take somewhere else. We've got the black castle. So that works really well. Okay, reset button doesn't want to buy me. Yeah. Turn it off. Now it'll be interesting to see whether it remembers that core. No. Right, so by default, if you don't select anything, it goes into the um, <clears throat> uh, into the click vision one. So, I mean, this is pretty damn cool. Now, there's some other options here. There's, oh, hang on, we'll wait for a second. Next, yeah. So you do have to have to split things up. Now, you can turn scan lines on. Um, and we can re and Disable, enable, so yeah, okay. So if I go and get one of my favourites and leave scan lines on, that's pretty damn cool. Scan lines aren't too bad, they give it a little bit more of a, a grittier feel, but I didn't mind it without the scan lines as well. I've played this a couple of times, so it's not really fair on them. Okay, we might go and play one more Atari 2600 game, because that probably didn't really... Um, oops. <coughs> probably didn't really um, show it to its best advantage. So, load ROM... Doesn't repeat. I might better work. Once again, I really should read the menu before I do things, eh? Now, obviously, do need to um, mix things up into directories so there's not too many files. We're only going to go here so far, and there are a lot of 2600 games, so. Something a bit more modern, colourful. Oh, hang on, the lasers is pretty good. Okay. There we go. I think I might have selected a US one too. Colors here. <laughs> Yeah, 
So, I think it does quite a decent job. They're working on the uh, Atari 2600 um, emulation as well, so it will improve, um, and more cores will be added later. But at the very least, I can play Coleco Super Game modules and have a bit of a play around with F18A stuff as well, which is fantastic. It's small. I can also have it um, for the time being inside my house. So I can play some Coleco in there and um, play original cartridges or off the ROM card. So it's actually very, very good. So a very high rating from Electric Adventures, I will say. I'm dead. <laughs> And being able to play some Atari 2600 games, which is one of my other systems that I love playing, um, will also be very good. I will, obviously, this is only on a smaller monitor. will look a little strange on a larger, larger TV, I'm sure, um, and I'll have to play with some of the other settings. But uh, very good. Collectivision will be doing a second batch of these, um, but they are waiting till they get a minimum number of orders. Um, obviously by my one they sold quite a lot of systems in the first batch so that was very impressive they would need I mean obviously they've paid for their case mold but they do need to make a minimum number of units before they make another batch um, and I think it's the mostly the boards that uh, when they get the boards made that do that to get it to the right cost uh, they're not making a lot of money on the units and they are hand assembled by Toby um, he does a very good job putting these all together look nice. There's two actual different case colours as well. There's one that looks like the um, Coleco Adam as well. Um, and they're hoping, planning to do that another batch, start producing another batch in February. So you've got plenty of time to save up some money, go to the Collective Vision website and place your pre-order for the next batch. And it will allow Coleco to live into the future because obviously the original consoles aren't getting any younger. It's great to run it on original hardware this is FPGA which is hardware emulation so it's really going to be the closest you're going to get in a new version of a Coleco and you can still use your original controllers except just don't pick one random one off the pile and clean them first um, but you can also use the um, SNES controller as well it's got the keyboard port uh, which will come, probably come into play a bit more later on when they get more cores running on it so very very good very happy to receive it I uh, thank Toby from the bottom of my heart for making sure he put one aside for me out of the first batch I was not expecting that um, <clears throat> I thought I have to wait at least until the second batch um, and sending it down all the way down here to the land of Oz so I could have one so I am very very happy with that um, so thank you very much Toby and the rest of the guys at Collectivision all right I'm Electric Adventures, thanks to all my subscribers, thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.